Welcome, nature detectives. I'm Conrad Baker. I'm an outdoor educator with the New York State Office of Parks, Recreation, and Historic Preservation at Letchworth State Park, and today I have a nature mystery for you. Sometimes it pays to take a closer look at some of the nature mysteries that we find on our nature adventures. For example, this aspen tree that we talked about a little while ago has another nature mystery growing right on its skin that I didn't see before and you might see it already. I think we can use our nature tools to figure out what kind of living thing this is and how it affects us every single day. We'll use two nature tools today, our eyes and our fingers. You might have spotted it right here, this little blotchy blobby thing. And already we notice that it really stands out from the skin of this aspen tree, especially today, which is maybe why I spotted it today and not before. It's a lighter color than the skin of the aspen. And it rained this morning, so that darkens the bark of the aspen and doesn't darken this nature mystery. So it really stands out because it's this tannish, brownish color. Maybe a, a fancy word for that might be beige. This is a beige-ish kind of a, a tan brown color, much lighter than the skin of the aspen. Second nature clue that we can use to figure out what this is is by gently touching with our finger, it feels soft. It doesn't feel like it's made of wood, not like the aspen tree bark. This reminds me of a foam or felt. It's kind of squishy, kind of soft, but not furry, not hairy. It doesn't have long strands coming off. It's just tiny little peach fuzz on the surface of it. It feels kind of like a spider web or kind of like felt or foam. And the third nature clue that we can use to figure out what this is is its shape. Even looking from there, you can see that it's kind of an oval shape, kind of a, a long round shape, kind of like a football or an egg. But unlike a football or an egg with our fingers, we feel that it's kind of flat. It's not round like an egg. It's kind of like a, a piece of, of foam has been stuck right to the side of the tree. It kind of stands out just a little bit, but it's not completely round like a complete football. So let's put all those nature clues together. We have a flattish, foam-like nature mystery stuck to the side of a tree. It's oval-shaped. It feels kind of like felt and kind of squishy. And it's beige tan, kind of light beige tan. This must be a disper moth egg mass. Now, disper moths are very commonly known as gypsy moths, but that term is used in a derogatory sense for a group of people who come from northern India. So it's starting to catch on more in scientific circles to refer to these by their scientific name. Their species name is disper, D-I-S-P-A-R. Now, disper moths can be very harmful to our natural environments here in North America. These moths are native to Western Europe, and Europeans thought that by bringing them to North America, maybe they would produce good silk for us. We would use them by their, their webbing that they make for their cocoons to make good silk. They didn't make a good replacement for the silkworm of Asia, and they happen to have a huge appetite for our native trees. I'm talking about some of our most important and treasured local trees, like, like maples that give us their sap for syrup or spruces that are such important uh, trees for making musical instruments, or like oaks, which give us acorns and tannins for wines and are really important lumber trees. These moths can do a lot of damage to our native trees here because their predators that normally would control them in Europe don't live here in North America, not here in Western New York. There are a few predators that have fun eating these caterpillars when they hatch out of these egg masses. And the ones that come to mind immediately are our cuckoo birds. We have two species of cuckoos that live here in Western New York around Lutcher State Park. That's the black-billed cuckoo and the yellow-billed cuckoo. Now, cuckoos have a superpower. Their stomachs can protect them from the fuzzy, hairy hairs that grow on these caterpillars that normally protect them from a lot of caterpillar-eating birds like bluebirds and robins. But cuckoos have a stomach that helps them to regurgitate or vomit up all of those hairs so it doesn't pass through their digestive system and harm them. It's pretty gross and really awesome. There are some other local living things that can help to sometimes control disper moth caterpillars, but unfortunately don't control them enough. They 
keeps their numbers down and keeps them from doing harm. One of the very coolest is what's called an entomopathogenic fungus. This is a parasitic fungus, a kind of a mushroom that grows inside these caterpillars. And they will spread from a tiny little spore. It's a seed-like particle, a tiny little particle that will eventually grow to become the fungus. When it lands on the caterpillar, it grows its fungal material inside the caterpillar's body and takes over the chemistry of its brain to convince it to climb up a tree and then the fungus will bloom the mushrooms will emerge from the caterpillar's exoskeleton like their skin and the spores will drift away from the the mushrooms to go and and infect more caterpillars and this kills the caterpillar but unfortunately doesn't take enough of them out of the population that prevents the spread of these disper moths the adult moths look very different. The males and females look very different. The females are very light colored. And the males are a little bit smaller and darker. And only the males tend to fly. The females will usually be seen sitting on a solid object, leaving these egg masses. The egg masses are really important to the disper moth life cycle because this is how they survive the winters. Even in freezing temperatures, these disper moth egg masses will stay totally still, not growing throughout the entire winter, not until the sun warms them up in the spring will they hatch and release all those hundreds of caterpillars into the ecosystem. If you really want to put your nature detective skills to the test, look for disper moth egg masses in your neighborhood. Unfortunately, they might be pretty easy to find. Look on tall standing structures, not just trees, but houses, sheds, barns, or park uh, infrastructure, benches, and signs. You might notice them on rocks. You might notice them on old rotten stumps. They'll be absolutely everywhere once you know what to look for. And unfortunately, that means that there will be a lot of disper moth caterpillars in the spring. A lot of experts will remove these egg masses when they do find them. You don't have to if you don't want to, but if you do, you can just gently with your fingers scrape them off, which pre prevents them from hatching quite so easily. And if you really want to go the extra mile, you can scrape them off into a little cup of soapy water. Well, thank you so much for joining me for today's nature mystery. If you have any questions about disper moths or other kinds of moths or caterpillars that you can find in Western New York, please put a comment in the comment section below the video. Share this video with your friends to put their nature detective skills to the test. And as always, like Lethra State Park's Facebook page to stay tuned for more nature mysteries.